So fight in February continues at pace, and after that dominant display by Kel Brook, we were all a bit worried going into that fight if maybe they were both a bit past it at 35, and and maybe you know not obviously well really not in the primes of their careers, which happened a few years before. But this weekend, coming up on Saturday, the 26th of February, at the Hydro Arena in Glasgow, we've got an unquestionable clash of two guys really in their primes. We've got uh, number one in the uh, in the in the super lightweight division, what we used to call the light welterweight division, Josh Taylor, you know, who holds all four belts, is the first British fighter, the first Scottish fighter to be a unified champion in the four belt era against his number one mandatory for the WBO belt in Jack Cattrall. Um, so, you know, this is, this is a fascinating fight. It's supposed to be kind of Josh Taylor's homecoming. It's supposed to be him kind of, you know, um, having a bit of a gimme fight in a way, you know, coming back to Glasgow, bringing back all the belts, uh, you know, proving himself number unquestionably number one in the world um, in that division. Um, uh, but he is fighting his number one mandatory contender in Jack Cattrall. And I think this is going to be a lively scrap. Um, you know, I think it's a little bit more dangerous than maybe people are thinking on. It's not as narrowed on as people think it is. And I'll go through why. So first of all, we've got Josh Taylor. I mean, Josh Taylor, 31 years old, um, only had 18 fights. Hard to believe in those 18 fights what he's achieved. Um, 13 KOs in those 18 fights. Incidentally, you know, he's fighting Jack Cattrall, an undefeated uh, challenger. Um, it's worth mentioning that Josh Taylor has fought seven times uh, in his 18 fights against undefeated people. Uh, against you know, In his last fight, Josie Ramirez was also undefeated when he unified all the belts. Um, and six times before that, he's faced undefeated fighters. So, you know, he's, he was a very accomplished amateur, um, you know, represented his country and in the 2010 Commonwealth Games won a silver medal, in the 2014 uh, Games won a gold medal and then turned over in 2015 um, you know, with Shane McGuigan and Cyclone Promotions. That ended a bit sourly, uh, you know, fairly recently in his career and he's gone over to Ben Davidson um, for that fight with Ramirez and, you know, he's it, it, absolutely riding high, top of the game, top of the tree, has, uh, you know, has, has never been knocked down. Um, uh, you know, just looks the whole package as a fighter, incredible dominant will to win, very, very skillful, very tough. Um, so, you know, so that, that, that's Josh Taylor coming into this fight. Uh, understand, I mean, the favourite. Now, who's his challenger? Well, it, it's the WBO mandatory number one contender in Jack Cattrall, who's 28 years old, 26 and 0, with uh, 13 knockouts in those 26 fights. Now, I say he's number one contender for the WBO. That doesn't really mean he's number one. Josh Taylor is ranked number one by all the, you know, the, the, by, the by the four man governing bodies. Obviously, he's their champion. And um, by, you know, independent uh, news, independent ranking bodies, such as those used by Boxing News, um, he's ranked number one. Jack Cattrall is ranked number nine. So, you know, while he's, he's a very worthy challenger, um, you know, he's not really the, the, the person like uh, John to Davis or these other people hanging around in that super lightweight division who maybe, you know, we, we would see as giving it more of a challenge to Josh Taylor. But I think Cattrall's a very, very live opponent. I mean, uh, like I say, he's, he's 26 and 0. 13 KOs. Um, this will incidentally, I'll keep, we'll keep going up about this fact, but this will be the fifth time in his 26 fights that he faces an undefeated fighter. Um, now, he turned over in 2012, so he turned over three years before uh, Josh Taylor, but he turned over when he was only 18. His amateur career wasn't so stellar, really for that reason. I mean, you know, he was a very good amateur. He had 66 amateur fights, uh, 148 of them, but, you know, at 18, he decided he wanted to go into pro game, so turn, turn pro. He's trained by Jamie Moore. Um, you know, he's a very tough, very confident young lad. Um, again, you know, he, he, you know, he's never been knocked over. He's, uh, you know, he, he looks like he's the full package. They share a common opponent, incidentally, in Ahara Davis. Um, you know, Ahara Davis, uh, Josh Taylor fought him in 2017 and stopped him in the seventh round. Interestingly, at that time, we thought this was a real 50-50 fight with Ahara Davis. You know, they were both undefeated prospects at the time. Um, you know, and obviously Josh Taylor really, you know, until that, you know, showed his dominance in that fight. Uh, the next year, uh, Ahara Davis fought Jack Catterall and lost a 12 round uh, points decision. So that's their only real common opponent where we, we can maybe take a bit, a bit of a metric from. But, you know, Catterall was very much sort of still, it was a bit younger, was still learning at that time. Um, now, Catterall last fought in November 2020. The reason for that hiatus, obviously we've had the pandemic and, and everything else, um, was that he was, as I say, the mandatory, and has been for some time, the mandatory uh, WBO number one. So he was supposed to get a shot for the WBO belt. But he took step aside money to allow Josh Taylor to fight Jose Ramirez in May 2021 um, to, to unify all the belts. So he just took the step aside money instead of pressing his number one status. But with the condition that he'd take the money and then he would fight the winner uh, of Taylor Ramirez, which seems a pretty smart move because, you know, you're going to get to fight for the undisputed title, uh, whatever you do. And here it is, he's fighting Taylor. So, you know, I, I think this is going to be a harder fight than people say it is going to be. I mean, if you look at the bookies odds, uh, Taylor is 1 to 14 on to win this. So in other words, you'd have to bet £14 to win £1. Uh, the bookies are so convinced. Uh, Catterall is 13 to 2 to win and the draw is 22 to 1. Um, I think those odds are a little bit unfair to Catterall. I think, you know, he's a very live, he's a confident young guy. The thing is with undefeated fighters, you don't know how far they can go. You don't know 
really they haven't really sort of you know they haven't found a level yet in a way um also as as taylor hasn't I feel in this fight, though, the golfing experience is going to be a little bit too much for Catterall. He may be able to bridge it. We don't know that. Um, you know, but I just think um, Taylor's got, you know, he's just a little bit better in all those areas. And the, the real thing that stands out is the quality of opposition that he's faced and the quality of opposition that he's overcome. So Catterall has never really faced anyone of the level of Josh Taylor. Um, you know, and obviously, why should he? Because he's just come to the top of the tree. So obviously, that's the, the final time when you find out, you know, you take your, your leap of faith. Um, and, uh, you know, even though he thinks he can do it, I think Taylor's going to have a bit too much. I also think it is going to be a factor, it being in Glasgow, it being the homecoming, it sold out really quickly. It's going to be a vociferous uh, Scottish crowd there, you know, that Catterall's going up to. So um, I think, you know, overall, I see Taylor, you know, but I, I do think Catterall's going to have his moments. And I think, you know, early doors, especially around maybe middle rounds of the fight, you know, I think Catterall is going to have his moments. I think it's going to be closer than people think. But I do see um, Taylor being dominant in this one. And I see late stoppage or points win for Taylor after a slightly harder fight than the bookies thought it would be. And Catterall giving a good account of himself. But, you know, I do see this, this is Josh Taylor's homecoming. And that's kind of the way I see it playing out. But it's a great fight. And, you know, you, sometimes you have to pinch yourself. You know, this is the unified um, champion coming home with all four belts fighting his number one contender, who also happens to be British. So, you know, it's just a great time for British boxing. Um, really excited by it. It's going to be a wonderful fight. Can't wait to watch it. And, uh, you know, good luck to both lads. It's going to be fantastic.